Hello and welcome to the Monday, June 1st, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. This weekend, the Sectico at Trust External Certificate Authority route was expiring. Now, Sectico, not really a household name, but you may have heard of Komodo, which uh, is essentially Sectico. And the root CA that was expiring here was particularly used to cross-sign certificates. Whenever a new certificate authority starts up, there is of course that problem in the beginning that nobody trusts that certificate authority yet. Uh, initially, for example, Let's Encrypt had this problem. And the result or the solution here is that you can ask an already established trusted certificate authority to cross sign your certificates. So now essentially there are two root certificates that are used to sign your certificates and then hopefully Hopefully, browsers will have one of those root certificates in their trust store and use it. Now, this particular Sectico certificate authority was expiring on Saturday, and in particular in the EDU space, it was heavily used, but also some other Komodo in particular derived certificates were cross-signed using this certificate authority, and in some cases, you may have been experiencing TLS errors as a result. The problem doesn't seem to be widespread uh, because there should also be that second set of authority, but uh, embedded devices, older operating systems or such that haven't been updated with a new set of root certificates, they may still rely on this Sectico at Trust External CA for actually to verify certificates. So if you experienced issues uh, like this over the weekend, uh, like I said, Saturday is when this certificate expired. Well, uh, you have to update your certificates. That's sort of one fix. Also, make sure that on the client, the certificate trust store, basically keep all the trusted certificate authorities is up to date. That's something that's typically being updated uh, with operating system updates. But uh, sometimes, of course, embedded device and the like, uh, they are not properly updated. And Apple fixed a critical vulnerability in the sign-in with Apple service. This is a relatively new service. And the selling point is that whenever you sign up for a particular website using sign-in with Apple, Apple will generate a new unique email address for you. So different websites that you sign in at will receive different email addresses. And this way, if data leaks from a particular website, it doesn't necessarily indicate that you are the one that registered for that website. Now, the problem here was that in order to use this service, you first sign in with your Apple ID with Apple. Apple generates uh, this uh, random email address. And then you basically send a request back to Apple asking it to sign a statement. And that's done via JSON web tokens that this email address is valid and belongs to you. Now, the problem was that in the second phase, you could send any email address uh, to Apple, not just one that was issued to you. And with that, of course, you could then impersonate other users. The flaw was discovered by Bavok Yain and uh, he reported it uh, to Apple and Apple has now fixed the vulnerability. So that's when Bavok did uh, release additional details. And we got some refinements to some of the flush based uh, site channel attacks uh, that we had in a number of uh, different uh, CPUs. Now, one of the problems with these attacks that's often sort of overlooked uh, when you're just looking at the demonstration of the attack is that uh, ideally these attacks work pretty well if the only thing running on the CPU is the victim process and the attack process. But of course, on a real system, you always have numerous different processes running at the same time, adding noise. Now, there is now a paper from two researchers at the Indian Institute of Technology in Kanpur that proposed some refinements refinements to uh, this attack that would take care of some of the noise issues. 
I don't think that's really sort of a total game changer in any ways, just makes these attacks that we are already aware of a little bit more practical. And then a little bit something for the good guys here when it comes to authentication. I have been talking about FIDO2 and some of the advantages we have there uh, with login in the past. Now, the FIDO Alliance website is historically more targeting developers and such. So it's very technical, going into a lot of details. They just made a new website available, loginwithfido.com, with which has a little bit more easy uh, to approach, more consumer friendly kind of version of their website that explains the technology and how to use it. So maybe something to share with management, friend and other non-techies to explain to them what FIDO is really all about and how it helps you to a more convenient, more secure login experience. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.